Ba -ba -ba -bum, ba -ba -ba -bum. Greetings all, last Outrider here. I am still alive. And I'm here to talk about the book, Master of Mankind. A video that I've waited very long time to make, probably about a year, because I couldn't answer one fundamental question. And that is, why was this book written? I don't know. I didn't know. I read it. I read it twice. I thought about it. I talked about it. And I just couldn't understand the purpose of writing this book. It brings nothing to the 40K universe. It adds nothing that we didn't already know, except for some minutia. It has no purpose. If anything, it detracts from the 40K experience. So, instead, anything I would have had to say about the book would have just sounded like a, like, like a bitch session, so I didn't make a video. But now I've been convinced to do so. The Master of Mankind, I think, turns the Emperor finally into a character that can exist in the 40k universe. First, there were the Primarchs. And for a long time, the Primarchs were these things that were just so far beyond power scale-wise that they could never exist anywhere in the game. They were just, they're just too far gone. The books brought the Primarchs down to an understandable, even playable level in the 40K universe. And now we have figures for them and they show up on the tabletop. The next step was to do the same thing to the Emperor. I mean, if you couldn't bring Primarchs in, how much more could you not... The Emperor was this entity which simply could not exist in the game. It, it just couldn't. What's your character? Here's the Emperor in my army. What, 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 you're gonna, you're gonna lose a battle with the Emperor in it? Well, this book does just that. That's exactly what this book did. It showed that you could have a battle with the Emperor in your army and beat him. That's the purpose of this book. There's, at some point in time, going to be an Emperor figurine rules for the emperor he's going to be on a tabletop in 40k that's the purpose of this book and it took me a long time to understand what they were shooting for here when when that's the goal uh you, 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 like aaron said in his afterward he didn't want to add anything uh, to the canon. He didn't want to make the canon. He didn't want to define the Emperor except to put enough of a box around him that he could exist in the 40k game as a product. Is that good or bad? I, I don't care. Um, I, I would have done it differently. I think I think his view. Uh, I think this book is an example of a book that was written by committee on 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 some ex, ex levels. There was so must have been so much input into what to say, what to write, how to present the emperor. As he said, he wrote, he read every single thing that was ever written about the emperor of which I hope he started with the Inquisitor War uh, uh, series, and he, he seemed to because uh, there was one sentence in the book where it said, the Emperor never smiles. Never! 
never that. And I could only attribute that to somebody who's read the Ian Watson books, where, you know, the Emperor's sense of humor was excised from him and sent off into the webway, which would therefore mean the Emperor never smiles. But the fact that the Emperor is just a man now, uh, like, like the Sisters of Silence said, they just see a man sitting on a throne in, chi in pain. That's what they were going for here. The Emperor is a quantifiable thing. Um, he's not all-knowing. His foresight, apparently, is virtually non-existent. I mean, really, Aaron goes to great pains to say that the Emperor can barely uh, see, you know, what he's going to have for dinner tomorrow. Uh, because there's just infinite possibilities that might happen between today and tomorrow. He just doesn't know what he's going to eat. It's what he's going to wear. What color will his socks be? It's just too much. It's too much. Too much. He's not omniscient. At least that's how I read it. Um, of course, <laughs> uh, this... So, in many ways, he did make canon. He made a lot of canon. And basically, the biggest canon that this book adds to the 40K universe is that the Emperor is just a dude, a man, a guy, who doesn't know what's going to happen tomorrow, um, who can be beaten, who can apparently be stabbed and bleed, there was a story out there uh, in one of the novellas where the entire quest was to get one drop of the Emperor's blood because he used a drop of his blood to sign a rogue trader contract and they needed to get this, just this, just this one drop was so incredibly powerful it could, it could do so much. Now uh, apparently, the Emperor can, can bleed by the leader, and it, 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 won't, it won't matter anymore. Um, you know, first he was a being who could wipe out an entire legion with a thought. Uh, he could just, you know, kill just extinguish Primarchs with a thought, now he can be fought by demons. Uh, they can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. He actually uses a weapon. Okay. So I, I look forward to seeing the, the Emperor figure and the rules for the Emperor to show up in some version of 40k in the future. That's what I understand the, the purpose of this book. In addition, uh, you have to have some foundation when the, when the Siege of Terra happens, when the Emperor beams up to the barge to talk to Horus. You're going to know who's talking. You're going to have a history, a point of view, a perspective that the Emperor has for that conversation before it happens, which again, the purpose of this book is to define the Emperor for later use. Um, we always thought that, you know, the Primarchs looked at the Emperor as dad, uh, Horus was his favorite son, and he just couldn't bring himself to, 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 to hurt Horus until the custodians uh, were, were injured. Now we know that the Emperor really has no emotional attachment or investment in the Primarchs at all. They were just tools that he created and he they, they don't really matter to him. 
on a personal level. Uh, the 10,000 do, the Primarchs do not. That is going to be a cornerstone to be used in, 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 in this conversation that the Ember is going to have with Horus. So, so it, it quantifies the Emperor. It, it makes him mortal in many, many, many ways. Um, now that I've said that, I'm going to say what I would have done. Not that that's better, but it's what I would have done. And how I would have, if I were to write the book, this is what I would do. I would have taken this flawed emperor that they've wrote and used that to manifest all of the different versions of 40K together in one person. Because that's one of the other defining factors is that this emperor that we see here is limited. He has limited to certain uh, editions of 40K and Rogue Trader, right? He, this is not the emperor from Rogue Trader or second edition or anything like that. That emperor was different, but it didn't have to be. It didn't have to be. You see, if you made this emperor, this man who says, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, then what you could have done is you could have had all of these iterations, instead of saying that the emperor had this grand plan from day one, 2,000 years ago, and has been working on it ever since, you could have said that the emperor has been trying multiple plans to save humanity over, uh, over the tens of thousands of years. You could have said the entire dark age of technology was simply another plan by the emperor to save humanity that just didn't work. Uh, there might have been multiple plans as he went through his development, as he, as he learned who he was to try to save humanity. And this great work, the Imperium, and this great work was just the latest plan. That way, when this fails, everything doesn't fail. It would have been, it would have been very entertaining. If somewhere, if, if, if that's how the book was written. If they said, if he just said at the end, okay, so the great work didn't work. That's okay. You know, the dark age of technology didn't work either. I mean, I did that and fuck, I created Old Knight due to that mistake. You know, uh, uh, there's that saying that says, uh, someone whose mistakes take 10 years to fix is a great man. Well, there you go. It took a thousand years to fix the emperor's mistake. There you have it. So if they had done that, if Aaron had done it that way, then you could have had all of these different aspects of the emperor exist at the same time without any conflict. You could have just said, well, that was another Emperor's plan. Okay, the Imperium fails. We got it. The Primarchs, they failed. I got it. The great work, it failed. I got it. We're going to try something new. I'm, I learned from my mistake. I'm going to do something new next time. Wait until you see what I've got coming next. And then you could have moved into the Emperor Ascension, the Emperor Worship. He found out how to use faith to protect humanity uh, from chaos instead of cutting them off uh, like the like the original plan was there and he could have said hey I learned I learned that doesn't work we're gonna go this route um, and that would have been brilliant that's how I see the Emperor in my 40k universe at this time now that we've brought him down to an understandable being and he's going to be human, then to err is human. So the emperor is not omniscient. The emperor is not um, is flawed. He's been trying for 200,000 years to save humanity. Uh, this was his, his last attempt, and now he's going to try something else. And maybe being worshipped as a god or blah, blah, blah could be the next attempt to protect humanity from chaos 
once again. Um, maybe faith is a type of psycher ability that in and of itself is protected from chaos. And there's precedent for this in the books because you can watch the, um, the Inquisitor War. That entire series was just another plan of the Emperor to save humanity. The Kraken. The Emperor is going to get inside your head and psychically link every human being in existence that way protecting it from chaos. So if you simply make this thread, this the central theme of the Emperor of I need to save humanity, I'm the master of mankind and I need to save humanity as his cornerstone, his core, and everything he does is a plan to do this. And these plans have not worked yet, but he's still plugging away at it. That's an Emperor that you can bring into the game. That's a finite emperor that's playable, that's understandable, and that's a far better incarnation than what appears in this book. Uh, this emperor is just limited. It's a Horus Heresy emperor. It can't exist outside of that, um, is, is what I would say. It can't be a rogue traitor emperor. It can't be can't be, you know, who, who's the emperor in, in the dark age of technology? He can't really exist there. He's hidden, as they would say. Um, who's, the, who, who's the emperor before that? Who's the emperor in the past? Who's the emperor in the future? Doesn't exist with this book. This book kind of pigeonholes him and puts him in a corner. What I just said would have worked. That is how... I see uh, the Emperor, you know, uh, feel free to let me know what you think of that. Who knows, maybe word of this will sneak back to Aaron or Games Workshop or somebody, and they might think, that's a cool idea. I don't know, but until next time, you must tell me. Bye.